Hi Sagittarius, this is your love reading for May. We're going to do Sagittarius Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. This is also if you're spying on a Sagittarius. Um, but we're going to do singles and couples. Okay, so singles are first, couples are after. And let's get started. Okay, singles. What kind of elements have been, you know, like from the past, are affecting your present current wishes? And they're like, this I, This is similar to the single Leos. I think that was their first card as well, where it's like, okay, I know that I need like a stable and predictable person in my life, like based on my history. And, you know, like I'm comfortable waiting for it. Like, I'm not going to accept anything less than that. Like somebody who doesn't like really pay attention to the details of what I need, like, nah, not open. Um, so why is it that you want that right now? And because, you know what, honestly, it makes you feel better. It makes you your better self. It helps you to have more fun, be more, like, passionate and exciting when you're not bogged down by all these responsibilities, when somebody else shares in the burdens of your actual life. <laughs> what kind of things can you expect to happen this month? And they're like, honestly, don't worry about it, because if you're going to live in the future too far, you're going to be living in anxiety. They're like, get a lot of sleep this month. Um... <laughs> so funny, like a lot of you might be like, okay, fuck this tarot reading then, right? <laughs> to shut it off. Um, but they're like getting a lot of rest this month is going to be super important because that's when your spirit guides or like your angels and stuff, that's when they heal you. That's when you move through a lot of emotional stuff. And then that's also where like possibilities come from. That's interesting. I've never heard that before until now reading your cards. But it's like that's where like your dreams kind of expand and you can see things beyond like the little scope of of, you know, what's normal for you. And they say slowly but surely you're going to start moving in the directions of your dreams. And so your dreams are going to actually be super important for you this month. This month this video is not one like only in the general videos do I give you like a crystal of the month, but I will say um for Sagittarius then, a single Sagittarius, you might want to look and see what kind of crystals will help you with dream recall? Because there's a fuck ton of those. Okay. Anyway. Um, factors influencing the way that uh, love may occur in your life. And they're saying, you know what? Like, all of this hope and optimism is going to be really, really attractive to you, like in other people, and other people just won't be. Like if somebody isn't fun, if they have a negative attitude, you're going to be like, mm -mm, I don't even see you. Um, because you really want to feel something deep with somebody, but you want it to be easy. And I don't blame you for that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> They're saying um, you're really not going to want to move forward with somebody who doesn't have any sense of enthusiasm or fun. Like you don't even bother talking to them because a strong relationship is going to be a fun, passionate, fiery relationship. You're a fire sign. You need that. And you definitely you definitely don't want anything that's like crazy town or it's negative or it's emotional because it's just too much shit for you to deal with at this point. Um, yeah, I don't blame you. How are other people perceiving you this month? And they're saying... Um, Maybe just like not in the right mental space to want to be in a relationship, but they definitely don't see you as like a selfish or controlling energy. They, for whatever reason, they see you as a little sad, even though I don't necessarily pick up that your energy is a little bit sad. What are some factors that are um, influencing your love life this month, like external factors, things that could happen? And they're like, well, anything that seems like it's not good, like communication chasms, like you send the text message to the wrong person and it kind of fucks up your life a little bit. They're all actually lucky occurrences. Things that seem bad this month are actually really good things in regards to meeting your future forever person. Um, so keep that in mind. Like everything has a reason, right? 
Um, what can get in your way of finding love this month? And they say um, not necessarily your work, as though even though that would usually be something um, that would be something more likely to influence your love life um, in a negative way. But what they're saying is that um, really you just might not be having enough fun. You might not be going out enough or you're uh, still talking to somebody that is probably not good for you. Like you're trying, you're like halfway in the door <laughs> of a relationship that's just sort of shitty, like waiting and waiting and waiting for that person to change or for the situation to change. Um, but for the rest of you, they're like, honestly, just communication fuck ups, things like that. Um, maybe like you think that somebody said something about you, but it was a miscommunication. And so then you start a fight and it ends up to be feeling really bad, but it ends up to be a good thing. Um, they're saying other than that though, there's really not that much that's going to influence you. Like you need to get out and have a lot of fun this month because you're looking for somebody who matches that vibration. Who's a lot of fun. Right. And it doesn't mean like throw caution to the wind and like go heavy into drugs and night clubbing every night. It just means like the things that you find fun or enjoy, which could be even like a walk in the park, you know, like going for a jog. Cause some people love that. Um, you might run into somebody who also loves that, that finds that shit fun. Not me. Um, okay. Best course of action or advice. Uh Oh, it fell on the floor. Give me a sec. They say, um, <laughs> it's going to be challenging to make decisions. Okay. So if, Whenever you're like in this challenge to make a choice, to make a strong decision, understand like, are you making this decision out of like an optimistic place or a pessimistic place? Am I deciding not to go somewhere because I'm afraid of what could happen? Or am I deciding to go somewhere because of the possibilities of things that could happen? All right. You want to make every decision from an optimistic standpoint instead of like, what could go wrong? Well, what could go right? Okay. Okay. You want to weigh all of that um, that way because it's, for whatever reason, fire signs, it must be in general because Leo had the same energy. It was really challenging to, to be decisive. Um, so there must be some fucked up astrology for fire. They're saying um, whatever you do, you're going to want to be able to go forward with it like full force, like balls to the wall with tons of enthusiasm and it shall yield you many blessings. So staying focused on the positive is going to be super, super important. If you don't listen to that guidance, if you don't listen to that advice, they're like, um, nobody's going to want to talk to you because you're no fun. <laughs> if you succumb to the negative, right? Um, they're saying <laughs> they'll think of you as honest, right? Like not like a, but not like a fake person who's just like cheesy and smiles all the time. Like where do they get all that fake ass happiness? Um, but like it really doesn't do you any favors um, because it doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't make you feel hopeful. It doesn't make you radiate your sunshiny light. Okay, and you are a sunshiny light because you're a fire sign. Now, um, what happens if you do follow the advice? And they're saying, well, you know, you're still going to face some challenges. You might be a little bit paranoid, but really the possibilities are limitless and everything that feels maybe negative or like a little bit fucked up is actually going to bring you a blessing. It's for your highest good. I just made a video on this actually about my trip to Denver with my best friend Natalie, and I'm not going to talk about it because I just want to get moving on to the coupled uh, Sagittarius, but if you want to know what I'm talking about, if it doesn't like click right away for you, it's a good video to watch. It's like five minutes. Okay. Sagittarius couples. What kind of things in the past with your partner are affecting you now in May? Ooh, all this hope, optimism, like ideas of happily ever after and fulfillment and love and like the possibilities of where this relationship could go. However, now you might not be feeling super confident about it. Were you overconfident? Let's find out. They're like, no, you just have some sort of guard up this month. Um, so what can you expect as a result of that? Um, <laughs> this is so funny because it's really, really similar to the Leo couple's energy. You could expect to be like wanting to have a lot of fun, but sort of being bitchy. And, you know, like, I guess I should find out what the cards say before I just, you know, vomit up the, the Leo reading for you. Um, so, so how should you navigate that? And they're like, just stop thinking about the stuff that makes you crabby. It's that simple. Good for you, lucky. <laughs> they say, make an effort to show love to your partner. Um, 
yeah, so it's basically the same thing as Leo's. It's like go out of your way to do things that are romantic, um, but it's actual acts. It's not telling them that you love them. It's not telling them that they're the most beautiful person in the world or they're so handsome or they're so smart. It's about like, you know, um, waking up early and making them their favorite breakfast or putting a sticky note on the mirror that says, you're special, or um, texting them, you know, uh, a sexy picture in the middle of the day. Whatever it is that you do to make your partner feel loved, do things. It's actual doing of stuff, okay? Um, how is your partner perceiving you? Um, like, you're not putting much effort in, and that's why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to do stuff because saying stuff isn't enough. Um, but they also perceive you as kind of like needing a rest. Like it's not so much your fault that you're not, you know, putting tremendous effort into the relationship. You've got a lot of feelings going on. You might be tired. You got a lot of people like that have their own opinions about how you should be living your life. And that's not necessarily always encouraging. And so I think your partner understands that. Um, what is the best way to kind of bring more love into your life this month with your partner, aside from what we already mentioned. And it's saying that um, letting go of the things that, that aren't good in the relationship, like not because, you know, you walk in the door and your partner's like, hey, when are you going to make dinner? And you're like all stressed out. Instead of spazzing and like holding on to that resentment, like internally and not saying things and then snapping at them later as you watch them, like watch Netflix on the couch and you're like doing dishes and making dinner and stuff. They're like, instead of not talking about how you're feeling and stuffing that emotion, just be like, hey, um, you know, no judgment. You probably didn't know how my day went, but I'm just letting you know I'm a little bit stressed out and, um... I really can't have you talk to me unless it's words of encouragement. And if they joke and say something like, hey, you know, you're really great at making dinner. I can't wait for that. <laughs> um, then you have to tell them, like, seriously, that's not helping this month. Sometimes that's funny. This month it isn't. Um, because you're going to have to also explain to them, like, sure, you know, um, maybe you're not giving as much love as they deserve and as much as you want to because you're stressed out and you're tired and you need more rest and like whatever. Um, but they also have to be cognizant of the fact that you need that from them as well. Okay, so if you listen to that guidance, what happens? They're like, you won't be disappointed, your relationship grows stronger and your communication gets better. Um, if you do not listen to that and you totally lash out and snap, what happens? Um... Well, they're not going to be very loving and romantic and helpful with you this month, and they're going to think you're a bitch. So, that's May. <laughs> Hopefully, June's a little bit more exciting on the love front, but it doesn't look bad. Like, overall, it's a good thing. You know, your relationship grows stronger should you listen. So, love and light, and see you soon. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!